So where we left off last week is we had this surface of some kind and we were using the properties of the surface to render the light at that point on the surface. So this was the normal vector at that point which we received from the normal map, <clears throat> excuse me, and we also have the angle to the light and we called that vector V in the previous video, but I'm going to call it L. So this is the light over here. And this L is the vector that points to the light. And we use Lambertian surface, properties of a Lambertian surface, to calculate N dot L. N dot L. Which was the lighting of the surface at that point. And then we also figured out that in order to do this we had to first transform it by T and by G which were matrices that brought the normal from the normal map space to the global space so that we could do this dot product. And now I'm going to give all that that we did a name. That was the diffuse term for the light. The diffuse term for the light. And we're going to go a step forward today and we're going to make a specular term. Specular term for the light. So what does that mean? And I have a picture so you can see what the specular term is. Think of it as if you have a very shiny surface, then this is your specular term right here. These little white dots will have a high specular term. If you have a, a sur surface that's shiny but is not very smooth, then your specular term will be a little bit different. It will be more spread out. So for example, polished wood as opposed to metal. And the specular term is really good for making objects look metallic or, or smooth and shiny. So we're going to try and figure out how to do that specular term. And the basic idea is let's take, a, let's take this light and reflect it, reflect it off this way. This is the normal of the surface and the light comes in like this, it's going to bounce up maybe to here or so. I'm going to call that vector R. That's the reflected light vector. And the amount of specular is, you can think of it as how much of that reflected light gets to the eye. So I'm going to draw another vector. We've got a lot of vectors now. This is V. And this is the eye over here. Oh, actually, it's a fairly good eye. So V is the director from the, the vector from the position that we're rendering to the player's eyeball. And the specular term is going to be the dot product of these two. So let me write that over here. It's going to be R dot V. In other words, how much light that gets reflected gets reflected towards the eye. That's sort of what the dot product tells us. Think about it. If R and V point in the same direction, then, and I've been, I should have written these with a hat because they're unit, this is a unit length V vector. If R and V point in the same direction, then the dot product is one. And if they point in opposite directions, the dot product is negative one. So if all of the reflected light goes towards the eye, we're going to get a high specular term. And there's one more thing I have to do here, which is give it an exponent, which I'm going to call A. A is A depends on the material, whatever the, property, the properties of the material are. A very shiny object will have a very high specular term. For example, metal, which is very smooth. And when light hits it, it reflects uniformly off the surface. That'll have a very high, whereas something like plastic or polished wood or even human skin. If you look at your hand under a light, it has a specular term, but it's a more low specular term. So A just depends on whatever the properties of the material are. But the problem is this R vector, we have to calculate it all the time, and it's actually fairly expensive to calculate. So what most games do is they cheat. They make a new vector, which I'm going to call H. H is equal to N plus L. Uh, I'm sorry, V plus L. 
v plus l. And I'll draw that in here. We take v and we add l, going all the way back to our vector addition video. Here's the vector that we get, h. h is v plus l. And we can use h instead of r to calculate the specular term. So I'm going to make a new specular term called SL star. And that is going to be n dot h. But we can't use h right away. We have to normalize it first. So in keeping with my tradition, I'm going to put a little hat over it to indicate that I've normalized it. And then we'll stake a back on there. And this ends up being actually a pretty good approximation of the specular term. There's a little bit of, of fudging that you have to do, but it ends up being a very good approximation. So we're going to use that instead. And so let's write out the entire formula. The entire lighting level is going to be the diffuse lighting level. And this is called the diffuse term, sometimes, plus, and I'll explain what this C is in a moment, the specular lighting level, and we're going to use the star version because it's faster to compute. And this C right here is a coefficient. Sometimes the material has a lot of specularity, and sometimes it has not a lot of specularity. And so we put this C here so we can control the level of specularity of our object. And these two terms, this is a bonus, the same way in our previous video we brought this normal out from a normal map. These two terms, the C and the A, can be brought out from maps as well. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I'm just noting that it is possible. Let's get a new color. If you bring C out from a map, that's called a gloss map. Gloss. That's what artists call it. And if you bring A out from a map, from a texture, then it's called a specular map. So that's specularity. Let's go to the code and implement it, because that's the funnest part. Now, I've already typed a lot of this out, because you have to do it in a very specific order. And if you get one thing wrong, it'll look awful. And then I'll embarrass myself. I want to embarrass myself. So let's just go through what I've done already. Here we go. We have to make the vector that points to the camera. So we take the camera position minus the current fragment position, and we've got that. We call this, in the, video, in the math portion of the video, we call this V. And then we want to make the half vector. Remember, we have to reverse the sunlight vector, because this is the direction the sunlight is going. So we have to reverse that. In, order, in other words, take a negative in order to get the direction to the light. So we say that camera, in fact, we could even say that camera minus sunlight. It's the same thing. And so we add these two vectors together and normalize it to get the half vector. So now we say the dot product of the global normal and the half vector to get us the specular term. Now, I have to clamp it at zero. It makes absolutely no sense to have negative light. That doesn't exist. I mean, the math of it is fine. You can have negative values come out of your dot product. But they don't mean anything in a physics sense because you can't have negative light. And so we clamp this at 0. If it's less than 0, we just clamp it to 0. Now, this is these are our A and C terms, which normally you would get from a gloss map or a specular map that an artist would make. But to keep this simple, I just chose some handy values that look good with our presentation so that you can see what's going on. And now we have to apply the power. So this is we have to raise it to the A. Spec Specular term raised to the a power. This is the GLSL function for raising to a power. And then lastly, we added in, here's our entire light equation, the diffuse term plus c times the specular term. And all this frag chord stuff is, is that I cordoned off a small box that, so that you can see the difference. And let's just, let's just hop into it and see what that uh, looks like. Here we go, OK. So the specular term is the bright sunlight that you can see on, on these stones. When I move, look at, look at, keep your eye on the, on the stone that I'm standing on right now as I back off of it. 
See how it's very shining and bright, but when I move to the side, it dims. And that's the specular term. That's, that's it right there. And you can even see that on the box in the lower left, which has no specular term. It looks darker because the specular term is not there. That's what that Bragport stuff was. I, I took it out of the lower left-hand corner so we could see how it works. So that's the specular term, and we're going to continue to explore light and shaders and stuff in the next few videos. I'm having lots of fun. I hope you are too. See you next time.